This is Ed with AtticFoil.com, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to measure your attic to know how much material to buy when you're installing Attic Foil brand radiant barrier. Now, this, this video is going to be for the staple up method, typically in hot or mixed climates where you're stapling it to the bottom of the rafters. Typically, you're going to run horizontal left to right with a 48 inch product, or you can use the 26 inch product and run vertically up and down. Now, as far as determining how to measure, there's really two methods. First is to estimate how much material you need, and the second is to do an exact measurement. Now, one of the common questions we get is, how much material am I going to need? Well, the average one-story home will use somewhere between 1,500 and 3,000 square feet of the double-sided attic foil radiant barrier. So let's get down to basics here. First of all, attic foil is sold in 500 and 1,000 square foot rolls. Now, simple question, what is a square foot? It's a 12 inch by 12 inch square. That's a square foot. As far as the rolls of foil, the 48 inch radiant barrier, 1,000 square feet is four feet wide and 250 linear feet. So it's 48 inches or four, eight, four feet wide, 250 feet long, four by 250, that gives you 1,000 square foot. The 500 square foot rolls, same thing. They're four feet wide. They're only 125 linear feet. So four foot by 125 gives you the 500 square feet. For the 26 inch rolls, they come only in 500 square foot rolls. They're gonna be 26 inches wide and 231 linear feet long. That gives you the 500 square feet per roll. Now, as far as measuring, there's generally three types of homes. And I'm gonna cover how to estimate for each style. And as far as the homes, they can either be big or small. It really doesn't matter. This is more about the methodology on how to measure each type. The first type of home is a one-story ranch style. Now the picture here is a one-story one ranch style, gable style. If you see the ends, it's kind of like a barn. It's got the flat ends and the flat and the slopes coming up. That's a gable style. The next style is a one-story ranch style with the hip style. Hip style is kind of like a pyramid with a top cut off. Usually you've got multiple slopes. They all come together at a peak. <clears throat> the next type of home, is what I call a two-story cake comb. Basically, you've got the first floor, second floor, and then the attic. The attic is just over the second floor. Now, the garage, it can either be, typically it's either tucked in under the second floor, like in the picture here, or it could be sticking out of the front or even the side. The next type of home is a one-and-a-half-story home. Now, this is a home where the second floor is a lot smaller than the first floor. Usually, it's kind of tucked in the attic. You're going to have some walls on that second floor that face an attic. And you most likely have a walk-in attic, a door on the second floor where you can physically walk in to an attic. And I'm going to cover, on, uh, cover how to measure these also. So the first thing you want to do as far as estimating is determine the square foot or the footprint of the attic floor or the concrete slab. Basically, the footprint of the attic and the concrete slab are usually pretty much the same. Second question uh, should you do the garages or porches? Yes, you definitely want to do the garages and porches, not because of energy savings, because of, because of comfort. In fact, you'll notice uh, the benefit of radiant barrier more in a garage than in the house because it's not air conditioned. That garage will feel like it's either a cloudy day or a tree just landed over it. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to subtract any areas that you just can't do. Maybe you've got a cathedral ceiling or you've got skylights or you've got areas that are just impossible to reach. Uh, just back that out. The next thing you're going to do is multiply what's called a pitch factor. Now, this is back to geometry. If you take the floor of the attic and you do the slopes, the slopes are more than the floor. So depending on how steep the roof is, we're going to multiply usually between about 1.1 and 1.5 uh, to get what's called the pitch factor. And I'll cover that here uh, a little bit more. Um, finally, whether it's a hip style or a gable style, I mentioned that earlier. If you've got a gable style, you want to add for the gable ends. Uh, people ask, should I do my gable ends? Well, the answer is if they catch sun, they're just part of the roof turned sideways. They're getting hot. And so unless you've got a north facing gable, I would do any other gable because they're going to get hot just like the roof. You want to get a piece of foil between either the hot roof or the hot gable end and that insulation. Now let's talk about how to calculate the pitch factor. Now, generally there's three types of roof. I'd call them a low pitch roof, a medium pitch, and a high pitch. Um, your typical home uh, is gonna be somewhere between what's called a 512 and about an 812 or a 1012. Uh, if you look at the chart here, you can see 
um, a low pitch, 1.1 to 1.3, you're going to add. Um, those those roofs you can pretty much walk on no problem. Uh, 6.12 to an 8.12 pitch, being a typical typical roof, um, you can probably walk on them. Uh, we call them a medium pitch. When you get into the 9.12 or 12.12s are really steep, usually they're impossible to walk on. You're going to multiply times about 1.4 to 1.5 for the high pitch uh, roofs. Remember, this is not an exact method. It is just an estimate. So let me run through an example of a one-story ranch style home with a 10-12 pitch roof. That's a pretty steep roof uh, with gable ends. So the, the footprint of the home, including the garage, is 50 foot by 40 foot. So it's 50 times 40. That gives you 2,000 square feet. The pitch factor of a 10-12, we're going to multiply it times 1.4. That's 2,000 times 1.4. That gives you 2,800 square feet. We've got a couple of gable ends. We're going to add 200 square feet each. I'm going to cover that in more detail here in a minute. So that gives you a total of 3,200 square feet. You would buy 3,500 square feet. Now, you would actually get three rolls of 1,000 square feet and one roll of 500 foot if you bought 3,500 square feet. So let's talk uh, about the actual gable ends. Uh, assuming the gable end is 40 feet long and 10 feet tall, if you take a line and you cut it right down the middle, you're going to get two triangles that are 20 feet wide and 10 feet tall. If you flip one of those triangles over, now you have a rectangle that's 10 feet tall and 20 feet wide. So that's basically how you calculate a gable end. You take half the width and you multiply it times the height. So here we have 10 foot by 20 feet, which equals 200 square feet. We've got two of those, so we've got 400 square feet. We're adding that to the 2,800 square feet uh, from the slopes. That gives us a total of 3,200 square feet. And like I said earlier, you would buy 3,500 square feet. Next, this is an example of the two-story cake style home. So it's a, the footprint of the attic is 35 feet by 35 feet. It's a medium uh, to low pitch roof with a 512. So we're going to use a pitch factor of 1.2. Really simple. We're going to take the 35 times 35. That gives you 1225. We're going to multiply that times 1.2. That gives you 1,470 square feet. You're going to buy 1,500 square feet. That'll give you a 1,000 square foot roll and a 500 square foot roll. <clears throat> Here's an example of a one and a half story home. Uh, it's got a medium pitch or medium high. It's got an 812 roof. We're using a pitch factor of 1.3. It is a hip style, so it has no gable ends. We don't need to add that in. Let's just say the footprint, including the garage, is 75 by 40, and you can access the whole roof above that second floor. Sometimes it gets tricky because you have some cathedral ceilings and tray ceilings, and I mentioned that earlier. You've got to back that out. But assuming you can get to the whole roof, you take the 75 times 40, that gives you 3,000 square feet. You're going to multiply times the pitch factor of 1.3. That gives you 3,900 square feet. Add in just a little bit uh, for overlap and waste. That gives you 4,000 square feet. So one of the questions is, you know, I've talked about determining the, using the footprint of the attic. So a question, obviously, is how to determine the footprint of the attic. So typically, the, the footprint of the attic is usually the, the square footage, the living space of the, of the first floor, plus any garages and porches. That gives you the footprint of the attic. Now, where can you get this information if you don't know it right off the top of your head? Well, you can go online to your local tax office. Usually, they're going to have an exact breakdown of all the square footage of, of your floors, your garages, your porches, all that. So what you can do is you can search for either appraisal district or tax assessor plus your county, and you'll find their website. Then from there, you can search for your property, usually either by name or address. Or another method is to measure the slab. A lot of times, the slab, the concrete slab, excluding the driveway, is the same as the bottom of the attic. Basically, it's the footprint of the attic. So you can either walk around, uh, measure the footprint, either walk it off, or you can use a measuring tape and get that, and that will give you the same as the attic floor. <clears throat> now here's a, we're going to cover a couple of exact methods for measuring. Now this is a little more accurate than using the estimating method. So if you've got a one-story uh, low-pitch roof and it's easy to walk on, you can physically get up and measure uh, the roof. You can measure the length times the width, do that for each slope, and add them up. That will give you the total um, square footage on a one-story on a low-pitch roof. Now, going inside the attic, as far as the exact methods, uh, one thing you, you can do is if you look at the rafters, typically 
they're going to be 24 on center. That means they're 24 inches apart. And then what you can do is you say, okay, let's look at this drawing here. So we've got 11 rafter bays. We know they're 24 inches apart. So that's 11 times 2 feet. That's 22 feet long from left to right. And then we measure from the ridge down to the eaves for the top to bottom. That gives you 10, 10 feet. So 22 times 10 is 220 square feet. And that's how much material you need for that slope. You would do that for each slope, add them up, and that would be for your total. Another method that's more exact is to get inside the attic and look up. You're going to see the square or the rectangular pieces of either plywood or OSB. Uh, a full-size sheet is typically 4 feet by 8 feet. So that's 8 times 4, which is 32 square feet. You can go through and count the number of full sheets you see. Now, if you've got a um, hip or a triangle area where you've got partial sheets, you're just going to have to estimate how many, how many par partial sheets you have that add up to the full sheets. Get the total number of sheets and then multiply that times 32, and that's going to give you the total square footage to do the radiant barrier on the bottom of that roof. So here are some final thoughts. Remember, estimates will never be exact. Um, unless you get up there and really measure it tight, you're either going to be a little over or under. You definitely want to do the garages. Um, once again, not a lot of energy savings, but definitely more comfort. You'll really notice it on your porches and your garages. Um, if you underestimate, you can always buy more. I always tell people it's better to, to buy more later than to have a ton left over uh, and buy extra on the front end. If, if you're not going to do the full house or you, you may run short, always start on the south and west sides and work toward the north and east sides. That way you have your big impact on your hotter slopes. Uh, always buy in kits. You'll see on our website, it'll say like 2,000 square feet for a price. Buy 2,000 square feet instead of 1,000 square feet times two. You're going to get the same exact product, but it'll actually get a better price. And the shipping is calculated on one box that we can put two rolls in instead of two boxes. So you'll save some money on shipping. Finally, give us a call. If you have any questions, we can help you estimate. Uh, if you've got pictures or drawings or floor plans, anything you've got, give us a call, email it to us. Uh, we are more than happy to help you out. And that's about it for how to measure your attic. And like I said, if you need help, don't be shy. Give us a call, send us an email. We're glad to help you. Thanks for watching.